The luxury apartment stood eerily silent in the upscale neighborhood, its pristine facade portraying nothing of the horrors within. The door was ajar, and as Detective Harper pushed it open, the faint scent of blood hit him, unmistakable and sharp. The gleaming marble floors and minimalist decor stood in stark contrast to the chaos that awaited. It was the kind of place where secrets thrived, protected by wealth and status. But today, those secrets lay bare, drenched in tragedy. Inside the body of Gregory Vaughn, a man in his early fifties, lay crumpled on the living room floor. He was once a powerful and affluent businessman, a man used to control, both in the boardroom and in his personal life. Gregory had lived in this high-rise apartment for years, a picture of success and indulgence. But now, his face was pale, drained of the blood that pooled beneath him. Around him, the signs of a struggle were subtle, almost as if whoever had been responsible for his demise had known him well enough to keep the chaos at a minimum. A glass of expensive scotch sat undisturbed on the bar. Gregory had a secret, one he had carefully hidden from the world. He had become a sugar daddy, a man who traded wealth and gifts for the companionship of younger women. His latest conquest, or so he believed, was Emily Jacobs. Emily, a striking woman in her early twenties, had been drawn into Gregory's orbit by necessity more than desire. Financially burdened and desperate, Emily saw Gregory as an opportunity, a means to escape her suffocating life. What had begun as an arrangement quickly became a trap, but Emily had her own secrets. Unbeknownst to Gregory, she had found solace in the arms of another, a man far removed from the world of luxury that Gregory occupied. Dominic, a local plumber, had entered her life by chance fixing a broken pipe in her modest apartment. What began as innocent flirtation turned into a passionate affair, an escape from the transactional nature of her relationship with Gregory. Dominic was everything Gregory was not. Rough around the edges, spontaneous, and most dangerously, unpredictable. As Detective Harper surveyed the scene, the weight of the Kais pressed heavily on him. The city had seen its share of high-profile murders, but this one was different. Gregory Vaughn wasn't just another wealthy man. He had connections, people who would demand answers. Yet something about the scene felt off, too clean, too calculated. Whoever had done this knew Gregory, perhaps intimately. The apartment itself exuded wealth. Nestled in the heart of the city, with floor-to-ceiling windows offering a breathtaking view of the skyline, it was the kind of place only the elite could afford. Each room was adorned with modern art, expensive furniture, and state-of-the-art technology. But beneath this veneer of luxury, the air was thick with tension. This was more than just a murder. It was the climax of a tangled web of deceit, lust, and betrayal. Detective Harper's gaze shifted to a faint trail of blood leading toward the bedroom. He followed it, knowing that the truth lay somewhere within these walls, waiting to be uncovered. Gregory Vaughn first met Emily Jacobs on a site designed to connect wealthy men with women seeking financial support, an arrangement Gregory had come to rely on as he grew older and lonelier. For men like him, successful yet weary from years of corporate power plays, this world of sugar dating provided not only companionship, but also a sense of control. The dating app was his hunting ground, a virtual playground where his affluence gave him immediate access to a younger, more vibrant life that he believed he deserved. Emily had joined the site reluctantly, fresh out of college and drowning in debt. She saw little choice but to explore options that she once would have found distasteful. With rent piling up and her waitressing job barely enough to cover the essentials, she convinced herself that a temporary arrangement with the sugar daddy could be a solution, a way to make ends meet until something better came along. When Gregory and Emily connected on the app, their contrasting lives immediately became apparent. He, with his tailored suits and high-rise apartment, represented everything she felt excluded from, wealth, ease and freedom from financial worry. His messages were polite but direct, promising her a life of luxury in exchange for time, attention, and companionship. For Emily, the allure of security overrode the discomfort that gnawed at her. The idea of being kept by a man wasn't appealing, but it was practical. Their first meeting took place in a high-end restaurant Gregory frequented. He was every bit the image of a man who had long ago mastered the art of charm. Ordering expensive wine, speaking with a smooth confidence that hid the subtle, possessive undertones. Emily, sitting across from him in a dress she had borrowed from a friend, felt the first pangs of unease but pushed them aside. The meal was delicious, the wine intoxicating, and by the end of the night, she had agreed to see him again. As their relationship progressed, the terms became more defined. Gregory was explicit in his expectations, weekly dinners, weekend trips, and, eventually, a more intimate arrangement. In return, Emily would receive financial support, 
monthly allowances, shopping trips, and occasional gifts of jewelry or designer clothing. At first, it seemed simple enough. She didn't love him, but Gregory didn't demand love. What he wanted was the illusion of affection, the comfort of having someone young and beautiful by his side. However, as the weeks went on, the dynamics began to shift. What had initially seemed like a transactional arrangement gradually grew more complex. Gregory's subtle possessiveness turned into overt control. He began to insist on knowing where she was at all times, growing irritated if she didn't answer his calls immediately or refused his requests to spend time together. For Gregory, the relationship had become something more. He saw Emily not just as a companion, but as a prize, a beautiful possession that validated his success. Emily, on the other hand, felt the walls closing in. What had started as a means to financial freedom now felt like a cage. The gifts no longer felt like treats, but chains, and the money, once so necessary, had begun to lose its appeal. Each dinner, each weekend trip, felt more like a transaction, with her sense of autonomy slipping away. The financial support that once seemed like a lifeline now felt like a leash around her neck, tightening with each passing day. Gregory's need for control became more apparent with every interaction. He would criticize the way she dressed, suggesting she wear more expensive clothes when they went out together. He would hint that her friends, mostly struggling artists and other waitresses, were beneath her now, encouraging her to distance herself from the life she had known before him. Emily, desperate for a sense of freedom, tried to push back gently, but each time she did, Gregory's temper flared. He was not violent, not yet. But the tension between them grew thicker with every argument. Psychologically, Gregory had always been a man who believed that money could solve any problem. In his world, where power and wealth dictated relationships, he assumed that his financial support would be enough to keep Emily content. He failed to see that Emily's dissatisfaction was not about the money. It was about the control. As his possessiveness deepened, Gregory became blind to the fact that Emily no longer saw him as a protector, but as a captor. On Emily's side, her desperation led her to Dominic, the plumber she met by chance. Dominic was everything Gregory wasn't, spontaneous, unpolished, and free. With Dominic, there were no expectations, no agreements to be kept. Their affair was raw, passionate, and most importantly, liberating. Emily found in Dominic an escape, a way to regain the autonomy she had lost in her arrangement with Gregory. But the more she slipped away into Dominic's world, the more dangerous her situation became. The tension between Emily and Gregory escalated, and she knew that something had to change. Gregory's once comforting wealth now suffocated her, and the sense of security she had sought had turned into a prison. Little did she know that her quiet rebellion, her secret affair with Dominic, would soon spark a series of events that would lead to an irreversible, bloody conclusion. Emily's encounter with Dominic had been entirely by chance. Her apartment, far less glamorous than the penthouse she often frequented with Gregory, had sprung a leak. Dominic had been the plumber dispatched to fix the issue, a routine job for him, another small inconvenience for her. At first, there had been nothing extraordinary about their meeting. Dominic, with his rough hands and casual demeanor, was the opposite of the polished, well-groomed men who populated Gregory's world. He wore worn-out jeans, a faded t-shirt, and had the smell of someone who worked with their hands, someone real. In that moment, that was precisely what Emily craved. At first, their exchanges were brief and professional. Dominic worked efficiently, talking little, occasionally offering her a smile that lingered just a moment too long. Emily, standing awkwardly nearby, tried to make polite conversation, feeling strangely out of place in her own home. But there was something about Dominic, his ease, his casual way of existing without the pressures of wealth or appearances, that struck a chord in her. In him, she saw a chance for something different, something that wasn't measured in dollars or obligations. Their connection didn't take long to deepen. After the initial repair, Dominic offered to come back and check on her plumbing a few days later. Emily suspected this wasn't entirely necessary, but she agreed without hesitation. When he returned, the conversation flowed more easily, the barriers between them slowly dissolving. Over time, their meetings became more frequent, more intimate. Dominic wasn't just fixing her apartment anymore. He was fixing something inside her, a growing sense of entrapment she hadn't fully realized she was under. Unlike her relationship with Gregory, which had always felt like a transaction, her connection with Dominic felt organic, even liberating. There were no strings attached, no expectations beyond the present moment. They would meet in secret, stealing hours away in her cramped apartment or in cheap motels outside of the city. For Emily, these moments with Dominic were a breath of fresh air. With him, she didn't have to wear the mask of perfection. 
didn't have to play the role Gregory expected of her. She could just be herself, flawed, uncertain, and yearning for something real. For Dominic, Emily represented excitement, an escape from the mundane routine of his life. He knew about her arrangement with Gregory, but to him, that didn't matter. What they had felt like something separate, something pure. He wasn't in this for the money or the benefits that Gregory provided her. He was in it for her. Their affair, though passionate, was also reckless, fueled by a mutual desire to escape the constraints of their respective lives. But as the weeks went on, the line between the two worlds Emily inhabited became harder to manage, juggling the demands of Gregory's increasingly controlling behavior and her clandestine meetings with Dominic wore her down. Gregory had always been possessive, but lately, his suspicion had grown. He would question her more frequently, his tone no longer one of a casual inquiry, but of a man who knew something was off. Emily, already feeling suffocated, began to dread the time she spent with Gregory. What had once seemed like an easy arrangement now felt like a prison, and each lie she told to cover her tracks with Dominic made the walls closing tighter. Gregory wasn't stupid. He could sense Emily pulling away, even if she tried to hide it. She no longer responded to his texts with the same eagerness, and the spark that had once made her company so enticing seemed to have dimmed. He started to grow paranoid, though he wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, the idea that Emily could be seeing someone else nod at him, especially as his possessive nature intensified with every passing day. He began to track her movements more closely, asking pointed questions about her whereabouts and who she was spending time with. Emily's vague answers only fueled his suspicions. Gregory's jealousy, once simmering beneath the surface, began to boil over. He started showing up at her apartment unannounced, his behavior becoming more erratic. One evening, he arrived late, knocking on her door with the same unsettling calm he had always carried. But when Emily opened the door, his face was different. There was something cold in his eyes, something unspoken yet deeply threatening. He asked her where she had been, his voice low and controlled. And though Emily tried to lie, he wasn't satisfied with her answers. He wasn't the kind of man who took kindly to betrayal. And in that moment, Emily could feel the danger lurking just beneath the surface. Despite Gregory's mounting suspicion, Emily continued to see Dominic. Their affair had grown too intoxicating to resist, and every moment she spent with him felt like a stolen escape from the life she no longer wanted. But the stakes were rising, and deep down, she knew it. Gregory was not the type of man to let go easily, and as his control over her began to slip, his need to reassert his dominance became more palpable. What had once been an arrangement built on mutual benefit had transformed into a ticking time bomb. With Gregory's jealousy, Emily's desperation, and Dominic's recklessness, all converging on a path that could only lead to one inevitable outcome, violence. As the affair progressed, the tension between these three lives grew unbearable. Emily's secret meetings with Dominic became more hurried, more dangerous. She knew it was only a matter of time before Gregory discovered the truth. And when he did, there would be no turning back. She had played with fire for too long, and now the flames were closing in on her. The cracks in Gregory's and Emily's arrangement widened quickly, but the final rupture came in the form of Gregory's escalating suspicion. The more distant Emily became, the more unhinged Gregory grew. He had always been possessive, but now his behavior bordered on obsessive. He began following her, hiring private investigators to trail her movements. When she wasn't with him, he wanted to know where she was, who she was with, and why she wasn't picking up the phone. It wasn't long before Gregory's suspicions were confirmed. Emily was seeing someone else. The private investigator's photos told the whole story. Emily caught in candid moments with Dominic, entering motels together, sharing stolen kisses in the shadows. Gregory's rage boiled over, and he felt humiliated by the thought of being betrayed. Not just by Emily, but by someone he considered beneath him, a plumber no less. When Gregory confronted Emily about the affair, it wasn't subtle. He waited until they were alone in his luxurious penthouse, the same place where they had spent countless evenings together, drinking expensive wine and enjoying the views. But tonight the mood was different. His voice was cold, his words calculated, designed to instill fear. He tossed the photos on the coffee table in front of her, his eyes burning with barely contained fury. You think I wouldn't find out? His voice trembled. A thin veneer of control stretched over deep-seated rage. Emily froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She had always known this confrontation would come, but she hadn't prepared for how vicious it would be. Gregory stepped closer, his presence towering over her, and she could feel the shift in the air. The man who had once showered her with gifts now stood before her as a predator, and the only thing running through her mind was escape. He didn't raise his voice. 
but the intensity of his anger was more terrifying in its quietness. For days afterward, Gregory's threats grew bolder. He wasn't just angry, he wanted revenge. He made it clear that if she left him for Dominic, there would be consequences. He would ruin her life, cut her off financially, and make sure she was left with nothing. He even hinted that Dominic would pay as well. Emily knew Gregory had the resources to back up his threats. He had connections, power, and a vindictive streak she had only now fully come to understand. Desperate and terrified, Emily turned to Dominic. She had thought their affair was an escape, but now it had put both of them in grave danger. Dominic, ever the impulsive one, proposed what she had secretly feared. They could make Gregory disappear. At first, it was just a thought, a desperate fantasy to rid themselves of the man who controlled Emily's life. But the more they talked about it, the more it began to feel like the only way out. Dominic's passion for her clouded his judgment, and Emily, cornered and panicking, went along with the plan, her desperation overriding her better instincts. Together they crafted a plan to lure Gregory into a trap. Emily, using her knowledge of Gregory's routines and weaknesses, would draw him into a situation where he would be vulnerable. Dominic would handle the rest. The plan was simple but brutal. They would confront Gregory in his penthouse, where there would be no witnesses, no one to hear his final moments. The night of the murder, Emily called Gregory, her voice trembling but convincing enough to pull him in. She told him she wanted to talk, to make amends, and he, still hoping to regain control over her, agreed. He invited her to his apartment, unaware of the deadly plot waiting for him. Dominix, waiting nearby, arrived at the penthouse under the guise of a plumber, responding to an emergency Emily had orchestrated earlier that day. Gregory, distracted by the thought of reconciling with Emily, didn't think twice about Dominic's presence. The penthouse was quiet, as it always was, but tonight there was an undercurrent of tension in the air, a stillness before the storm. As Gregory and Emily sat down to talk, Dominic lurked just out of sight, waiting for the moment to strike. Gregory's tone was sharp, cutting through Emily's nervous attempts to placate him. He made it clear that he was still angry, that he hadn't forgiven her betrayal but his guard was down just enough for the plan to unfold. Dominic entered the room quietly, a heavy wrench in his hand, his steps nearly silent on the polished marble floors. The attack was swift and brutal. Before Gregory could react, Dominic swung the wrench with all the force he could muster. The sound of metal connecting with bone echoed through the apartment, a sickening thud that signaled the end of Gregory's reign of control. Blood splattered across the white walls, a stark contrast to the sterile luxury of the penthouse. Gregory crumpled to the floor, dazed and gasping for breath as Dominic struck again, ensuring there would be no chance for survival. Emily stood frozen, her heart racing as the scene unfolded in front of her. She hadn't anticipated the violence, the sheer finality of it all. In her mind, it had been cleaner, less savage. But now, standing in the aftermath, the reality of what they had done sank in. The apartment was eerily quiet again, but the silence was heavy, suffocating. They had planned to make it look like a robbery gone wrong. Dominic rummaged through the apartment, taking valuables to sell the story, while Emily wiped down surfaces, trying to erase any trace of their presence. But the crime scene was sloppy, chaotic, and despite their best efforts, they couldn't control the blood, the evidence that tied them to Gregory's violent death. As they fled the scene, panic set in. The plan had spiraled out of control, and now they were bound by the secret of a murder neither of them had truly been prepared to commit. The weight of what they had done followed them, a heavy shadow that loomed over their every step. And though they had silenced Gregory, the repercussions of their actions would soon catch up with them. In the immediate aftermath of Gregory's murder, the weight of what Emily and Dominic had done hit them like a crashing wave. The adrenaline that had carried them through the brutal act now began to wane, leaving only panic in its wake. The two stood over Gregory's lifeless body, the once pristine luxury apartment now splattered with evidence of their crime. The plan to make it look like a robbery had seemed so simple in theory, but in the cold, hard reality of what they had done, it became clear how unprepared they truly were. Dominic, still holding the blood-stained wrench, wiped his hands on his jeans, his mind racing. We have to clean this up, he muttered, his voice shaky but determined. They moved quickly, as quickly as they could manage, while their hands trembled and their hearts pounded in their chests. Dominic grabbed what valuables he could find, watches, jewelry, even some of the expensive artwork Gregory had hung in his living room, while Emily frantically tried to clean up the blood, smearing it in her haste. Their attempt to stage the scene as a robbery was clumsy at best. The apartment had the look of violence, but it was far from the calculated crime they had envisioned. 
They had expected to maintain control of the situation, but now the fear of being discovered had them making one mistake after another. They knew they couldn't stay long. Every minute spent there increased the risk of being caught. Yet, as they tried to erase any trace of their involvement, the gravity of their actions weighed heavier and heavier. Emily's mind was racing. She had never imagined it would feel this way. She thought she would be relieved, free from Gregory's grip on her life. But instead, all she felt was dread. Her hands shook as she tried to clean up their mess, her breath coming in short, ragged bursts. She couldn't stop thinking about the blood. It was everywhere, on her clothes, on her skin, in places they would never be able to scrub clean. No matter how hard they tried, the scene wasn't something they could erase. Dominic, too, was beginning to crack under the pressure. His bravado, the reckless confidence that had driven him to suggest the plan in the first place, was now a distant memory. He was sweating, his hands fumbling as he wiped down the surfaces he had touched. But in his panic, he overlooked a crucial detail, the security cameras that lined the entrance to the penthouse building. As they fled the apartment, Dominic and Emily thought they had done enough to cover their tracks. They left in a hurry, slipping out the back entrance and into the city's darkened streets. But in their haste, they had made a series of fatal mistakes, mistakes that would soon unravel everything. The cameras had captured Dominic entering and leaving the building. And though they had tried to avoid the cameras inside the apartment, the footage from the entrance was clear. Dominic's face, his distinctive build, even the tools he carried were all caught on tape. Back at Emily's apartment, the psychological weight of their actions began to bear down on them. The initial sense of panic gave way to silence. Each of them lost in their thoughts, the magnitude of what they had done settling in like a dark cloud. Emily couldn't stop trembling, her mind replaying the moment Dominic struck Gregory, the sound of the wrench hitting bone, the sight of blood pooling on the floor. She had thought she was prepared for this, for the violence, for the freedom it was supposed to bring. But now, she couldn't shake the overwhelming sense of guilt and fear that consumed her. Dominic, on the other hand, began to shift blame. He had been the one to act, but in his mind, Emily was the reason they were in this mess to begin with. You should have stopped seeing him sooner, he snapped, his voice harsh and accusatory. The tension between them, which had been simmering beneath the surface, now erupted into full-blown arguments. They couldn't agree on what to do next, and every conversation led to a fight. Emily wanted to run, to disappear before the police could trace anything back to them, but Dominic insisted they could still get away with it if they kept their heads. But no amount of cleaning, arguing, or running could change the fact that the crucial evidence, the security footage, was already out of their hands. Worse yet, in their rush to leave the apartment, Dominic had left behind a single bloody fingerprint on the doorknob of the room where Gregory had died. It was small, barely noticeable, but it was enough. Once the police arrived at the scene and began their investigation, it would only be a matter of time before they connected the dots. The psychological toll of the murder began to fracture the once passionate bond between Emily and Dominic. Their love affair, once a thrilling escape from the confines of their respective lives, was now a prison of its own. Every conversation between them was tense, every glance filled with suspicion and fear. Emily could barely sleep, her mind constantly replaying the events of that night, wondering if they had left something behind, something that would lead the police straight to them. Dominic, once so confident in his ability to control the situation, was now paranoid, convinced that the police were watching them, waiting for them to slip up. It wasn't long before the police, armed with the security footage and the bloody fingerprint, began closing in on their suspects. The mistakes they had made, small as they seemed at the time, were enough to seal their fate. They had thought they could outsmart the system, but in the end, their own carelessness was their undoing. Detective Ryan Harper had seen his fair share of homicides, but something about the Vaughn case was different. As he stood in the immaculate penthouse, looking over the crime scene, the details didn't add up. Gregory Vaughn's murder was violent, yet the signs of struggle were minimal, too minimal for a spontaneous robbery gone wrong. There were valuables missing, but something about the chaos felt contrived, like it had been staged after the fact. The luxury apartment, with its gleaming surfaces and perfectly curated art pieces, seemed too carefully disturbed. Harper's sharp eyes scanned the room, absorbing every detail, from the subtle smears of blood to the slight shift in the furniture. Whoever had committed this crime had tried to make it look like a burglary, but they hadn't succeeded in fooling him. Harper had built a reputation as one of the most methodical detectives on the force. He didn't miss much, and his instincts rarely led him astray. In his years of investigating homicides, he had learned to trust his gut. And right now, his gut was telling him that this wasn't a simple case of robbery. 
The victim's background only deepened his suspicion. Gregory Vaughn was no ordinary man. He was wealthy, powerful, and connected. There was something personal about the way he had been killed, something intimate. The first major break in the investigation came with the discovery of surveillance footage from the penthouse building. Harper's team reviewed hours of footage from the night of the murder, and it didn't take long to spot something unusual. The cameras had captured a man entering the building with tools, a plumber, according to the concierge, who had no reason to suspect anything. But Harper's keen eye noted the man's body language. There was something off about the way he moved, something furtive. The same man was later seen leaving the building, this time in a hurry, his expression tight with tension. Harper had the footage enhanced, and soon they had a face. Dominic Lewis, a local plumber with no criminal record. But there was something about his presence that raised red flags. As Harper dug into Dominic's background, another name came up, Emily Jacobs. She was Vaughn's much younger girlfriend, a woman whose financial situation seemed to be entirely dependent on Vaughn. The more Harper learned about Emily, the clearer it became that this wasn't just a random act of violence. There was a tangled web of relationships and motives here, Vaughn's relationship with Emily and Emily's affair with Dominic. The next piece of evidence came in the form of text messages. Harper's team obtained a warrant to search Emily's phone, and what they found confirmed his suspicions. Dozens of messages between Emily and Dominic revealed not only the depth of their affair, but also the growing tension between Emily and Gregory. There were arguments, confessions of fear, and, eventually, conversations about Gregory's increasing control over her life. The text painted a picture of two people pushed to the edge, desperate to escape the grip of a man who had grown possessive and threatening. As the investigation unfolded, Harper methodically pieced together the timeline of events leading up to the murder. Interviews with Gregory's friends and colleagues confirmed what the text suggested. Gregory had grown suspicious of Emily. He had confided in one of his closest friends just days before the murder that he believed Emily was seeing someone else and that he was planning to confront her. It was a classic tale of jealousy, betrayal, and control. Harper's next move was to bring both Dominic and Emily in for questioning. Their reactions could not have been more different. Dominic, though clearly nervous, tried to maintain his composure. He stuck to the story they had concocted, that he had been at the apartment to fix a plumbing issue, nothing more. He insisted he had nothing to do with Gregory's murder, even as Harper pressed him with the evidence. The surveillance footage, the text, the fingerprints they had found on the doorknob. All of it pointed to Dominic's involvement, but he refused to crack. Emily, on the other hand, was a different story. The moment she was brought into the interrogation room, the facade of calm she had tried to maintain fell apart. Harper could see the guilt in her eyes, the way her hands trembled as she answered his questions. It didn't take long for her to break under the pressure. She started by denying everything, insisting she knew nothing about Gregory's murder. But as Harper laid out the evidence, the text, the footage, the bloody fingerprint, she began to unravel. Her confession came in fragments, each word laced with regret and fear. She admitted to the affair with Dominic, how it had started as an escape but quickly spiraled out of control. She confessed that Gregory had grown suspicious, that he had threatened her, and that she had been terrified of what he might do. But when it came to the murder itself, Emily hesitated. She didn't want to admit that she had played a role in Gregory's death, that she and Dominic had planned to kill him. In her mind, she had been a victim of circumstance, pushed into a corner with no way out. Harper, however, wasn't swayed by her attempts to paint herself as innocent. He knew that Emily had been just as involved as Dominic. The evidence was clear. They had both conspired to end Gregory's life. As the interrogation continued, Emily's story crumbled further, and by the end, she had implicated both herself and Dominic in the crime. Harper's sharp-eyed persistence had paid off. With both Dominic and Emily in custody, the case was all but solved. The investigation had revealed a tragic tale of lust, power, and desperation, ending in cold-blooded murder. For Harper, it was another case closed, but the story of Gregory Vaughn's murder would leave a lasting mark on everyone involved. The courtroom was packed, buzzing with anticipation. The trial of Dominic Lewis and Emily Jacobs had captured the public's attention, not only because of the violent nature of the crime, but because of the scandal surrounding it. A powerful wealthy man, dead at the hands of his much younger girlfriend and her working-class lover. It was a story made for tabloid headlines. The media had painted Emily as the seductress, the mastermind behind the plan to rid herself of Gregory, while Dominic was portrayed as the lovesick pawn who had acted on impulse. In reality, the truth was far more complicated. But in the court of public opinion, the story had already been written. Inside the courtroom, the tension was palpable. 
Emily sat beside her defense attorney, looking small and fragile, a stark contrast to the confident woman she had once been. Across from her, Dominic sat, his face a mask of defiance, but there was a flicker of uncertainty in his eyes as the proceedings began. The prosecution wasted no time laying out the case against them, painting a vivid picture of premeditated murder, the text messages, the surveillance footage, the fingerprint. It all pointed to a carefully orchestrated plan to kill Gregory Vaughn and make off with his wealth. The defense, however, took a different approach. Emily's attorney argued that she had been manipulated by Dominic, that she had been trapped in a toxic relationship with Gregory and had seen no way out. According to them, Emily had been desperate, but she had never intended for things to escalate to murder. It was Dominic, they claimed, who had pushed for the violent solution, who had taken control of the situation and carried out the crime in a fit of jealousy and rage. Emily, they argued, was merely a victim of circumstance. Dominic's defense team, on the other hand, painted a very different picture. They claimed that Dominic had been caught up in a whirlwind affair, driven by his love for Emily, but that he had never intended to kill Gregory. It was Emily, they suggested, who had planted the idea in his head, who had manipulated him into believing that murder was the only way they could be together. They pointed to the controlling nature of Gregory's relationship with Emily as the catalyst, but they insisted that Dominic's involvement had been minimal. He had been drawn into a deadly game he didn't fully understand. The trial dragged on for weeks, with both sides presenting their versions of the truth. The media played up the drama, with headlines speculating on who was truly to blame. Was Emily the femme fatale, orchestrating Gregory's demise with cold calculation? Or was Dominic the real killer, acting out of jealousy and desperation? The courtroom became a battleground of conflicting narratives, each more sensational than the last. In the end, the jury reached its verdict. Both Dominic and Emily were found guilty of first-degree murder, though the sentences reflected their differing levels of involvement. Dominic, having carried out the brutal attack, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Emily, despite her claims of being a victim, received a slightly lesser sentence, 25 years to life, but she would still spend decades behind bars. As the gavel fell and the court emptied, the weight of the crime settled over those left behind. Gregory Vaughn's family, who had remained mostly silent throughout the trial, left the courtroom quietly, their grief heavy, but their need for justice fulfilled. For them, the trial had brought closure, but it had also revealed the darker side of Gregory's life, a truth they would have to live with. For Emily and Dominic, the end of the trial marked the beginning of their new reality, one filled with the consequences of their actions. What had started as a desperate attempt to escape the clutches of a controlling man had spiraled into something far worse, leaving lives shattered in its wake. The affair, the jealousy, the murder, all of it, had led to nothing but wasted potential and ruined futures. The media would move on to the next scandalous trial. But the story of Gregory Vaughn's murder would remain etched in the memories of those who had witnessed the fallout. It was a grim reminder of how quickly passion and desperation could turn to violence, and how the search for freedom could lead to tragedy.